The River State Government has appealed a recent federal high court ruling that bars the Central Bank of Nigeria from releasing funds to the state. Governor Siminalai Fubara contends that the judgment undermines the legitimate governance of the state and was expected due to the trial judge's refusal to allow certain objections and procedural changes during the case. The ruling delivered by Justice Joyce Abdul Malik questioned the legality of River's 2024 budget which Fubara had presented to a four-member faction of the State House of Assembly loyal to him. The judgment describes this as a constitutional violation as it bypassed the full legislative approval process. As a result, the court restricted Fubara and certain banks from assessing funds from the Consolidated Revenue and Federation account until the budget is represented to the Assembly uh, faction led by Speaker Martin Amewile, who is uh, supported by the Federal uh, Capital Territory Minister Yesun Wike. For joining us is legal practitioner and former executive chairman, Okrika Local Government Council, River State Barrister Tamuno Williams. Uh, good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning. My pleasure to be with you guys. Great to have you. All right. I mean, I think it's important that you first of all clarify on rumors that emerged yesterday that the River State governor had gone on to stop oil exploration and production in River State uh, as a way to, you know, to fight back that the federal government um, um, or court ruling. So can you, first of all, help us clarify if that, that is um, a true report, a true story or not? Uh, the, the point is that it, that is not possible. Uh, it's even, uh, it's even uh, preposterous for anyone to conjecture that the governor of River State will do such a thing. One, it doesn't have the capacity to do that because oil, oil, oil facilities are governed by, are guided by the federal, uh, gov federal uh, security agencies. And uh, from my little knowledge of who Governor Fumara is, he will not even contemplate to do such a thing because um, he's a fellow who is law abiding. And uh, from my research about him, he's somebody who will want to follow the due process of the law. So that is completely true. But the second dimension is this. We almost recall that River State is the capital of the Niger Delta. And River State, uh, we have other ethnic nationalities here. We have the Kuris, we have the Jaws, we have the Gonis. But Governor Fobara is of the Ijaw stock. And Governor Fobara is the first governor to rule this state since after the creation of Bielsa. The last Ijaw governor was Governor Rufus Ada George. And I do, I do, I can recall very clearly that in the social media and a lot of other platforms, there have been complaints that should the former governor, uh, former governor of River State, Yosun Wiki, goes ahead to get this particular action implemented, which is to frustrate rivers people and bring them to their knees. That some state actors may be motivated. But I believe, to answer you directly, that uh, such actions may not take place. And for the governor, I'm sure as daylight that he will never be involved in procuring, in agitating, or even requesting people to do such an act. That is my simple answer. All right. Still following from that uh, question, we've seen the interview Asari Dukubo has granted stating that, you know, worried that the president is allowing Nelson Wiki run amok and why he hasn't called, called him to order and wondering about, you know, what might happen if they attempt to remove Simna Lai Fubara. Do you worry about what the implications might be, if not from the governor himself, but maybe from citizens of River State? Implications as to, one, the refusal to pay the federal allocations to the state and the consequences of that. Now, the implications are, are multidimensional. First is that when you go to court in whatever capacity, there is a remedy you want to bring about in going to court. And in most cases, it will bring about ultimately social justice for the welfare of the people. Now, in this case, this matter, this ruling is purely to massage the ego of some persons and then to grab political power and then to make the state calm down to its knees. 
Now, the first casualties would be reverse people. It's not Governor Fubara. It's not former Governor Yinsong Wiki. Reverse people are the ones that are going to suffer. Already, the suffering has started. If you're a civil servant, of course, you know that the minimum wage is not is 70,000, and the governor is saying pay 85 or so. But the minimum wage is never able to carry workers to the next month. So most people are living on borrowed funds. So because of the judgment, from my analysis and from my survey, most creditors will not want to grant even the smallest loan to civil service. Ah, okay, don't worry, you. we are saying they're not going to pay on our next month. So economically speaking, it's going to affect the vast state. Security-wise, it will also affect the vast state. I can tell you, as the chairman of council, the Nigerian police force, for example, how well is it funded? You require the government of the state, the government councils, to augment their funding, their funding on daily, weekly, monthly basis. With this seizure of the allocations, those funding will dry up, and it will mean more, more security. Now, at the international level, they look at us at Nigeria. What kind of state is this? A state, I'm talking about the Nigerian state, will allow its apparatus to seize and capture the funds of another tier of government, another state, which ordinarily is, you know, independent and extent. Then the third aspect is that, look, it makes a caricature of the Nigerian state. That Nigerian state, you don't have certainty of laws. As long as we talk about judicial precedents, we have enough judicial precedents to show that when a matter is on appeal, as in this case, the cases cited by the Honorable Judge, with due respect, are matters that are still pending before the Supreme Court. So I where there is yet to be a final finality on the state of the law, on the issues in contention, and you go ahead and force you know, a fiat accomplished on the, on the state. So the implications are very grave and monumental. Now, politically speaking, we must all know, Nigerians must all know that this case is purely about 2027. It is an attempt to frustrate, it's an attempt to completely make reverse states irrelevant, ungovernable, and bring the people into abject poverty and penury. So ultimately, it could lead to some unintended political consequences. Recall the West, West, um, West, uh, uh, South, West, uh, the West, 1966, and thereafter, the the, the Action Congress uh, uh, crisis that led to the coup, and then all that. All these are historical antecedents that should be worrying, you know, same Nigerians that the reverse state debacle, which has gotten to the near pinna pinnacle, whereby the court has ruled that it's not just the next allocation, that even the allocations in the consolidated fund should not be assessed by the, by the university government. So the implications, as I said, they are multidimensional and they are grave and frightening. I also want you to speak on, I mean, you know, many people have pointed out, you know, the, the fact that or the, the, the story that the judiciary seems to be getting in itself intertwined in politics. It is belittling itself to a very, very pitiable, you know, um, level where court orders, you know, can just be given for anything. Uh, I remember Justice, um, uh, the CJN, Kike Reku, when she came in, she made a lot of statements about what she wants to, to achieve with the judiciary, but it doesn't seem like much really is changing with the Nigerian judiciary. So can you speak, you know, on that? And also the the um, chaos that has led to this particular court ruling now. Um, you, we can argue that Sim Fubara is completely innocent in all of this. You know, presenting a budget to four people sounds very, very awkward. So talk about the legality of what Sim Fubara, you know, initially did. And then also, just the justice who gave this ruling now to stop funding what are your thoughts on both of, of these things? Well, first of all, uh, as a lawyer who, ha who is obliged to keep to the ethics of the profession, I will not speak to uh, the issues of character of the courts or the character of the outcome. I will speak to 
what is the law. Now, the first point is the Nigerian, the Nigerian state is a federal state and will operate a constitutional democracy, okay? And the, the Constitution of Nigeria 1999 has severally amended, makes provision for how the country should be governed. Now, the critical sections of the Constitution talk about the issue of 27 members defecting from one party to another party. There is a subsisting Supreme Court judgment which gives final authority that where a member of the House of Assembly defects, unless there is a division in his party, he will lose his seat. Remember that the Supreme Court also ruled that local governments are supposed to be governed by democratically elected members, chairmen, and a house. And the court said they were giving a progressive interpretation to the provisions that governs the government structure and system. And said, by progressive interpretation, we are saying that if you don't have elected local government uh, uh, system, will not you cannot get funds. Now, where I'm driving to is that you cannot pick one section of the constitution, interpret it to your favor. Even as a lawyer, we're obliged to disclose to the court authorities that are adverse to our case. We are supposed to let the court know this and this, these are the scenarios. <laughs> now, in this case, lawyers have argued about the Attorney General of Lagos State and Attorney General of Federation 2004. We talked about the fact that uh, former President Obasanjo wrote a memo stopping allocation to Lagos State. The facts are not the same. The facts are different in the sense that in that case, it was a memo. But the object is the same. So right now, where we are, we're in a situation where the constitution is interpreted in a way that is detrimental to the state. That is one aspect. The judge has given a judgment. What should be done and what has been done is that there is an appeal and I'm sure the River State government will take the appropriate step to, to suspend the execution of this judgment. But let me just point out one very important fact. The Federal High Court rules provides that, even the Federal High Court law, that where a matter comes to your court, you can refer the matter to alternative dispute resolution mechanism. That is to say, I've seen this matter. I'm the judge. But it's in the interest of justice that this matter should be dealt with at another forum, which is known to law, which is the alternative dispute resolution mechanism. Now, I am surprised and I'm wondering that this matter was not referred to that platform. Because that platform will have enabled the parties to sit down and then they will have understood the wider implication of the consequence of the judgment. But what we saw was that there was a supersonic speed with which the matter was dealt with. And that brings into the public questioning the character, not me, the public. Speakers upon speakers, writers have been asking, what kind of judgment is this? But for us lawyers, we'll contest it. But mind you, let me bring the Nigerians back to some historical antecedents of cases from River State that you they must factor in in understanding judgment. In 2019, Nigerians must recall that former governor Wiki and his party went to court. They went first on 2nd of uh, uh, 7th of January that the All Progressive Congress did not conduct their primaries appropriately. And therefore, they will not, they should not be allowed to contest the election. The Federal High Court in, in Port Harcourt granted judgment in that case. They went to Appeal Court. Appeal Court affirmed the judgment. And on the 7th, on the 8th of February, 2019, the Supreme Court indeed held that APC did not comply with its own rules. 
So in that election, effectively, you had only PDP candidates, which was Governor Wiki, that contested the election. Now, what does that tell you? It goes to show that the pillars of rule of law, of democracy, one, is the freedom to vote and be voted for. I'm going to use memory lane to tell the implications. So on the legal angle, two points are very poignant. One, when a matter is multifaceted as this one, part of the premise upon which a decision is being taken, the judgment in the River State High Court, the judgment before by Justice Motosho, the Court of Appeal judgment, all of them are now before the Supreme Court. So, as we say in legal parlance, the matter is to some degree sub judice. That's it's a matter that is before a higher court. Can a lower court take a decision that will now remove the rug under the feet of the Supreme Court? That is a question that the appropriate supervisory authority will look at. Now, going over to the other issues that you raise, my, my take is very simple. If 70, 70, 70, 20 members have resigned or have, have defected and their seats are vacant, the governor does not have to wait until when there is a ruling of the court because he's the chief executive of the state. And the law does not contemplate that in a House of Assembly, a number as high as 27 will defect. And what was there was four. And the four must continue to perform the function of the House of Assembly. So in summary, and in the eyes of the law, except that this law is being interpreted in a way that does not favor the people. Every court of law, ordinarily, must look at the policy implication of the judgment and the overriding public interest. That is why in America, the American Supreme Court, in most cases, will refer matters back to the lower court, suggesting that the matter be looked at from alternative dispute resolution uh, mechanism. I think that's my take on that matter. I don't know whether I covered all the areas that uh, you raised. But thank you very much for your responses. Now let's look at another issue that has become an issue of public concern. We've seen a lot of tongues wagging because the Chief Justice of the Federation, uh, Justice Keke Reiko, attended the groundbreaking ceremony of the 40 quarters that are being built for judges in Abuja. Should you know this be an issue of concern? Because many people are linking this. They, there are many articles. I'm sure you've seen a number of them online who, that will talk about why the Nigerian judges are friends with Chinese Somwike, you know, and why they pander to him and how he has his judges in their pockets. So, is, should it be a thing of concern that he's building these quarters, or is it their rightful entitlement? Uh, the, 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 the matter is simple, and that is why. Uh, for, to understand the implications and to answer a question, the rules for the appointment of judges and ethics provides that a judge must not be seen hand in glue with a person who is either a litigant or a frequent lit litigant or a person who is obviously likely to be before the cause. The question is this, the person they are referring to is a lawyer. He's also a life bencher, a life bencher of Nigeria. Currently, the, the minister of the Federal Cap Capital Territory of Nigeria. The constitution is clear, very clear, that the judiciary is independent. The question is, why is the judiciary not funded enough to be able to carry out this project that is now being executed and backed upon by the minister for Abuja? That is the question. The question again is, do they not have the funds to execute the project? To the ordinary man, the ordinary person on the street, who sees the minister going to embark upon such projects whereby the beneficiaries are going to be the judges in Abuja? The ordinary man will be worried. 
and be worried because he will recall that in River State in 2019, this, the, the Federal High Court, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court all ruled in his favor that no, a political party is not qualified to contest an election. And he was the sole candidate. So when people look at the surrounding circumstances, they will be worried. Even you'll be worried to put it in a simple form. You are having a dispute with party A. And then by tomorrow, two of you have a, will appear before a judge or a magistrate or chairman of your community. Chairman of your community. And in the evening, you see your party A and the man that will be judging your case tomorrow sitting together in a place to lay to, to open a house. You'll be worried. The law requires that justice should not only be done, but, but must be seen to be done that the ordinary man will leave the courtroom feeling that, yes, indeed, this judgment is fair. This might take what happened as a person. I cannot say it is wrong, but it creates an impression that what has transpired in River State may be replicated in Abuja. My dear, the economic reality in Nigeria is stark clear to everybody. And we don't have a strong regulatory framework to rein in people. You must be aware that in a sister state here, a chief judge is alleged to have changed his name, his date of birth, three, four, five times. And the matter is now before the appropriate agency for investigation. You are aware that the minister in the federal, in the federal uh, cabinet was suspended and had been asked to be investigated. The matter is over 90 days. As we speak, it was yesterday we had a report that EFC has sent in a report. And the point is that, look, every day, government activities are portraying, making people believe that, indeed, the government have preferences. And for a for the judge, for the judiciary, which is supposed to be the final arbiter, it should ordinarily stay at arm's length when dealing with people who whose conduct, whose precedence may create this doubt that has arisen. That's my take. Much um Tamala Williams for your thoughts this morning. Uh, I think you know you've you've stated them pretty clearly. Uh, we will see how the next uh, couple of days, uh, maybe next couple of weeks, turns out between Simfubara, Nelson Wiki, and of course uh, the Nigerian government, um, everyone who's who's involved in all this controversy. Thanks for your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you very much.